In Frisco ISD, we want to know all our students by name and need. In order to do that, we have to establish connections in the classroom with our students. So we've reimagined our classrooms, putting relationships first, and by strengthening and maintaining those relationships, it prepares students to learn. Relationship-centered learning has really helped promote uh, the things that we have been already doing for years, but it has really put some intentionality to what we're doing uh, with our students uh, in the relationship piece of it, because it's focusing on many different areas so we can learn about students backgrounds and they can learn more about each other and we basically learn more about their needs that they have for learning. Relationship-centered learning is an effective evidence-based approach to building a culture of connectedness where everyone belongs but it is most effective when coupled with clear expectations and accountability for our learners. Before we ask students to enter into the vulnerable space of embracing the challenges that come with learning content material, we want to provide them with a foundation of feeling safe in their classroom environment. Relationship-centered learning has benefited my classroom greatly this year, especially math is a hard subject for kids to feel vulnerable in. The first day of school they say, I'm not good at math, I hate math, and I think doing the relationship-centered learning throughout the year, it makes them feel more comfortable and vulnerable. They'll reach out, they'll answer questions, even if it's not right, they know it's a safe space for them to do so, and I think that's something very much in the math classroom that we've seen. In Frisco ISD, we decided to train staff on four questions quick, simple connection tools that they can implement in their classrooms. With these four evidence-based tools, all teachers have concrete strategies they can apply to build teacher-to-student and student-to-student -student relationships. My favorite is the two-minute connection. I feel like it's the perfect amount of time. It gets the kids up, out of their seat, really interacting and engaging. Um, so one, for example, that we did at the beginning of the year is the students all got up and they got in a circle and the question was, what's your favorite fast food and what do you order? And just seeing the common um, orders and the common uh, places that the kids have really kind of built on relationships and I could kind of dive into those and be like, oh, that's what I get from there too or I've never tried that. So the two minute connections, definitely one of my favorites. We want our students, despite their backgrounds and their interests, to learn how to work with others to come up with conclusions or to get solutions and by them understanding each other more through this relationship centered learning it really helps to where they can work together to get solutions. It has really helped put intentionality to everything we do and helps promote uh, ideas for our, our teachers to use with students to get to know them more and it builds that trust between both of them. While positive relationships in our classrooms proactively reduce behavior incidents, when students violate the student code of conduct, we are still responsive to those violations through use of appropriate consequences. Following consequences, with relationship-centered learning, students are more likely to successfully re-enter the classroom environment due to the strong connections they have with their teachers and peers.